Hi, welcome back to Retro Axis. I've been using Linux since the 1990s and beyond servers and workstation use cases, of course, there are Linux games. So over the years, I've checked out and played various different free and open source games and I'm gonna share some of those with you today. Let's get started. So the first game we're going to talk about is from mdsteel.games, Azimuth. It's a great Metroidvania style game where you explore the level, you get power-ups, and those power-ups enable you to get to new parts of the level so you can explore and find additional power-ups to continue further through. There's boss battles, uh, it's very Metroid-like. The difference, the key difference, is that you're flying in a ship. Rather than having a character that runs and jumps, you're, you're flying uh, in, a, in a spaceship. And it changes the na dynamic of the game. So if you like Metroid and you like that style of exploration mixed with a character, it's very similar, but the spaceship concept adds a little bit of a difference in the gameplay. It's actually pretty challenging and it's a ton of fun. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna load it here, I'm gonna use just uh, the, the window based version and full screen doesn't quite work with my capture card, uh, but I will zoom in so you can see the gameplay. And great, great music by the way as well. I really do enjoy the uh, sounds that this game has has put into it. So here's my ship. You can see I'm floating around and I've got a door I'm gonna go through. This is a save point I was at previously. And I can hold in my key for a stronger shot. So here's a computer console I've already been to, but I've downloaded survey map data, so I've got additional maps. So let's take a look at the map screen here. So you can see the maps, uh, you've got a very large uh, you know, map here, and I've only found a small portion of it. I'm assuming this other blank area will get filled out with the map, but so far I've found these areas. Also taking a look here, I can see that I've got my charge and freeze power-ups enabled and I've got some rockets and some bombs. And I can see a list of uh, power-ups that I've found. And you can see I've got armor, hyper rockets, and C plus drive. Uh, but just seeing there's a lot more here that I have not found. So truly a challenge, lots more to do and see. But just flying around just a little bit more. Power up here, rockets. If you like Boulder Dash, which is one of the classic games from the 1980s, there's a great alternative game called Rocks and Diamonds. It's not an exact clone of Boulder Dash. It sort of goes its own way and does some really interesting stuff. Now this game is also available for other platforms besides just Linux. So if you go to the Rocks and Diamonds webpage at artsoft.org, you can learn more about this particular game. There's apparently a touch version as well. I did find that uh, it has touch controls in the setup, so there is apparently an Android uh, uh, version of this as well. Um, but Rocks and Diamonds is a ton of fun. Let's take a closer look at it. Uh, and let's begin with level one. So pressing start.
go into the start game. So firstly, here's my character. You see, I can move him around. And there's this little envelope here. We'll check that and it gives me a little bit of a hint. So I've got all the items. Here's a hint. I'll go into the exit door and start the next level. Let's try that again. And it may be the case that I just made a mistake. Or I can go down here. I guess I forgot about that. Now I think, yeah, that breaks open. And here we go. So here's the hint. Rocks can pass quicksand, rocks can smash diamonds, a nut turns into an emerald when hit by a rock. Now the game gets challenging. It begins to add things like, like enemies and other challenges here. Let's look at a later level. Here you can see in this game we have more enemies here on the right. And I've just crushed myself. Anyway, progressively as you play this game, it gets more and more challenging, and of course there's different tips and tricks that you gather as you're going through. But really great alternative to Boulder Dash if you like that style of game. Uh, very retro, but really great job in how this game was built. So if you've ever played the original arcade game Tron, there was the light cycles part of that game where you would drive the light cycle and it would create the walls. And there's been various versions of this game made over the years and our Megatron is by far the most fun. There was another one called, uh, I think it was called GL Tron. There's some other, you know, uh, 2D based, very basic versions of this game like Snake as an example. But our Megatron AD is one that I like particularly because of its network features. So you can actually stand up in our Megatron server and you can have, you know, local network or internet based battles uh, playing the our Megatron game. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. And you can customize your levels, customize your, uh, your machine. There's a lot of really fun aspects to that game. So let's take a look at our Megatron AD. All right, so first let's set up our player. Make sure we have our configuration set up. Now there's a, there's a trick in our Megatron AD called double binding. It's a way that you can make turns a lot quicker. And to give you a tip, if you add a secondary turn left button, you notice here uh, Z and Y in W are all options for turn left. But here I can do Z and the left arrow key. Turn right, I'll do right key and the X. Break is V. I like to do space bar for breaking. And of course it has a built-in chat feature as well. Also you can adjust the camera view if you like. I'm going to go with the defaults here. And you can also change the color of your machine. So if you want to adjust the color, you just Hold in the arrow key left or right, adjust your RGB value until you get to the color that you want. You can set the number of players per team, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's get back to the main menu. I'm just going to play a local game. 
not a multiplayer, so I'll be playing against some AIs. Try and box this guy in. Now another trick to this game too is if you want to go faster, you got to get really close to the other person's wall. As close as you can, that will accelerate you a lot faster. That's just a, trip to, a trick to playing this game. There's also a way you can look left and right and adjust your cameras. Uh-oh. Oops. Oh yeah, he blew up. So speed is also king in this game. The faster you are, the quicker you can pass the other person. So that's where the double binding trick comes in. So as an example, to make a really fast turn, see I took him out because I was faster. You use both keys simultaneously, so right and X or left and Z as I've set them. If you use them quickly, there's also a setting in the game where you can adjust the size of your trail. So if you want a longer trail, you make the adjustment because eventually your trail will disappear. So that should box him in pretty good. Oops. Anyway, this game's a lot of fun. If you like Tron style games or arena style games, you can make arenas much larger. You can add more than, more than two or three artificial intelligent uh, enemies if you like. There's a lot of customization you can do here. And if you're playing with friends or with teams or with other uh, people, uh, it adds another element of fun and, and unpredictability that really makes the game tons of fun. So this is our Megatron Advanced or our Megatron AD. It's also worth noting that our Megatron is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. So if you do want to play with friends or coworkers, you know, if they're on different platforms, you can all play. It's universal. It works really well on all those platforms. And that way you can make sure you have a larger group of people who are able to play the game with you. Another genre of games, the Breakout series. If you've ever played Breakout or Arkanoid, uh, you're familiar with sort of game where you have a paddle and a ball and you're bouncing it to break bricks. And of course, there's been a lot of these made over the years, and there's more than one for Linux. There's one called L Breakout, which is a lot of fun. But I also like Brickola, which is a really good one. Um, so let's take a quick look at this guy. So here's the game loaded up. You can notice you can go to settings. It's got a level editor also if you want to do that. Uh, I'm just going to use the standard resolution here. We're not going to do full screen. Uh, controls, you can make your changes here. I'm just going to go with the standard. I'm going to actually use, I have a trackball mouse, so this is actually really great for playing a breakout style game. And let's begin with the first level. Note that a power-up came down out of that one block, so some of these blocks have hidden power-ups, much like Arkanoid. Uh, there we go. That one wore off. There we go, all right. So beat the first level. Here's another level. Let's collect this barrel. All right, so here you go, a fun take on the breakout game available for free on Linux. 
So one of my favorite games is Load Runner, and I'll do another episode on just Load Runner style games, but I did want to dabble really quickly into SDL Scavenger. So if you like Load Runner style games, this is one that's very similar, uh, and it works uh, very much the same. Um, the difference here is there's a few add-ons that Load Runner doesn't have. So as an example, as you're going through, there are hidden enemies that are hidden in the bricks, and when you find them, if you if you put them back into a brick and they fall in, you actually can get a power-up. So it's hard to find. They're not always in the same location in every level. Or even if you play the same level twice, it's not always hidden in the same exact brick. So sometimes you have to really go looking for this guy. There it is. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> but if you do capture him, you do get a, an extra bonus in this particular level. There's also, there a second ago, you might have noticed this one down here was blinking. If you get it first, if you get the blinking item first, you get um, an extra bonus point at the end of the level. We'll see if he's in the same spot as before. Yeah, sure is. So let's go ahead and capture him this time. All right, so we got the bonus and let's head to the exit. And there we go, we passed the level, found the hidden monster. I did not get the flashing item first, but I did complete it and, we, and I got a time bonus. So this is SDL Scavenger, here's another level. So you can see it's you know very similar to the Load Runner genre. And uh, it's a ton of fun, lots of challenging levels. So that's it for this episode of Retro Axis. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these open source games that are available for Linux and other platforms. I've enjoyed them and I hope you will also. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to leave me some comments down below and we'll see you next time on Retro Axis. Mm -hmm.